friends, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. That's Dylan over there in the corner. That's what he normally looks like when I'm filming these. Um, we're struggling with light today, so I have got to come in a little bit. And I'm actually sitting at my desk and you can see the bookshelves in the background. Right. Okay. Now that you know where you are. Uh, so the reason I'm here today is because right now Hurricane Irma is going through uh, the southeastern United States where I live. So yeah, we're getting a lot of rain and there's a lot of flooding in the lowlands, so uh, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers as you um, go forward. And there are a lot of different relief um, uh, nonprofits that you can donate to. Um, I will find a couple to link down below. Um, so if you do not live in the southeastern United States and you would like to help out that way, that would also be awesome. Yeah, so I have uh, gotten cold actually because the temperature dropped like 20 degrees. Um, so I'm on cold medicine, so this will be exciting for everyone involved. Hopefully I won't say anything too embarrassing. Sorry future Kendra if you have to edit stuff out. But yeah, so today we're going to be doing my, um, what is that, second half of August wrap up. And hopefully I will be able to talk coherently about these books because there's no, there's no real guarantee about that. But here we go, on into the breach. First I'm going to talk about some books that I forgot in the second half of my August. Um, first half of my August wrap up. Oh my goodness, this is so hard. Okay. One of the books that I forgot is How to Be Both by Ali Smith. Um, I can't believe I forgot this book because I love, 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 love this book. Um, if you didn't know, it's actually split into two parts. There's a part in the present and then there's a part in the past, like Renaissance painting era. And those parts are actually flipped in some editions of the book. So it doesn't really matter what order you read them in, but actually it does. And that's kind of the point is that you can only read them for the first time one way. Um, and you can read them like the other way, but you will always have all those additional information. So she kind of plays with what's revealed when. So the contemporary part is about George and I think it's like short for Georgiana or something. I don't know. And she um, is suffer like suffering grief. She's experiencing grief from the death of her mom. Um, her mom was really into painting and they were obsessed with a certain painter. And she would go and find symbolism in this painting. Um, and George thought her mom was crazy because she's finding symbols in everything. Um, and then her mom is going crazy because George finds symbols in everyday life. And she's really intense and philosophical and stuff. Um, and then the Renaissance painting is the actual painter that her mom is obsessed with and they go and that's actually a um, a woman who dresses up like a man so that she can paint because you know women aren't supposed to do really do anything back in that time. Uh, her prose on audio is fantastic. If you're an Ali Smith fan and you've never listened to her on audio I would highly recommend it because her prose just is made to be read out loud I think. It's just it's just beautiful. Um, I love this book. I thought that the contemporary side was much stronger than the Renaissance painting side, but I enjoyed both of them. Um, I would still highly recommend this book. I am now going to read all of the Ali Smith things when I have time, which who knows when that's going to be. So I read this uh, as a buddy read with Doris over all the books. If you haven't checked out her channel, you definitely need to. She has all kinds of uh, fun and interesting books. I find books on her channel that I don't really hear about other places, which is always a good sign in my book. And we had fun talking about this book over Voxer um, and just finding different things and sharing insights. And that was really cool. So thanks to Russ for doing that with me. Um, it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to stop waving this book around and all of the shiny things. Um, the next book that I forgot is Paper Girls Volume 3. This is them, well, if you don't know, like you have to know, right? It involves like alternate realities and time travel, something like that. So they end up in this prehistoric era place for reasons I won't tell you. Um, I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed the second one. Um, this one, I don't know. Paper Girls and I have a tumultuous relationship. Um, I kind of like them, but I really enjoyed the second one. So I was hoping it was just the first one that I didn't like. I don't really know what else to say about that because I can't really talk about spoilers, but I will keep continuing reading the series. Um, and I enjoy the whole 80s nostalgia thing, which seems to be a huge thing in popular culture right now. And I do enjoy the feminist themes. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of picky. I know, I know. Moving on to books that I read in the second half of August. 
So I've already talked about In Other Words, which I adored. Um, this is about Jhumpa Lahiri's um, adventures into learning Italian and um, just a lot of thoughts on that. I really love this book. Um, half of it is in Italian, half of it is in um, English, so like you have the, if you, you can look at both at the same time. There we go. So if you're, if you're trying to learn Italian or you're bilingual or whatever, I really think you'd enjoy comparing language and Goldstein, the translator of Elena Ferrante, translated this one. I think I have tabs in this book. I do. This is also the libraries, so I should probably take those out, right? <laughs> and I'm just throwing these on the floor. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. This is also, this is Sunshine State. I also reviewed it. I'm going to link that up above. You probably already saw it. Um, this is by Sarah Gerard, out from Harper Perennial in the United States. We talked about this on the Reading Moment podcast. I really enjoyed her longer essays. Um, I keep thinking about them, but I really didn't like her shorter essays. So that kind of bumps it down a bit in my mind, but her longer essays are just are really well done. Uh, so next up is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. Oh my goodness, guys. N.K. Jemison is amazing, and I found she does polarize the bookish world, but uh, my friend Autumn, who co-hosts the podcast with me, she really is not the biggest fantasy fan. She tries to be nice and pretend she likes it more than she actually does, for my sake, but I know she's not the biggest fan, and she kind of does the whole genre thing, but that's okay. Um, I do that with mysteries and thrillers, so I guess it balances out in the end for our friendship. Um, but I really love her and actually Autumn liked her, which is the point. Like someone who really didn't like fantasy really liked this book. So I love what N.K. Jemison does with the genre. She takes your expectations of what this book is about um, and the concept behind the book and turns it on its head. I've heard some negative reviews of this book um, about this book is about a certain thing or a certain trope or a certain concept and that's kind of what she makes you think it is, but um, it's not. It kind of like turns it on its head in this book and I really enjoyed that. I love like that she kind of played with expectations and fantasy and I heard an interview with her on the New York Times Book Review podcast which I will link below and she talks about that, like where, what she does with her fantasy and everything. Um, I can't really talk about what's in this book, obviously, because it's the last in the series. But I was not disappointed. I hope it wins the Hugo like the other two in the series did. Um, I will link um, my review of the fifth season somewhere around here. And you can go check that out so you can hear the summary and everything. But yeah, uh, this book um, is the third in a series. The fifth season is now being made a series on TNT. So you'll want to check that out. And uh, she also has another trilogy coming out from Orbit. So keep an eye out for more N.K. Jemison. I just, I just love her. Next up is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is one of my five-star reading predictions. Um, I really loved everything I never told you. I have mixed feelings about this book. And I know it's because I had um, certain expectations for it. And... It wasn't what I expected it to be. And I know that's part of my problem. So we're just going to take that and set it aside because we are. Um, <laughs> it's my review. <laughs> we can do that. All right. So uh, I, everything I love, everything I love about everything I ever told you. There we go. I loved how tight it was. I loved how perfect and the structure was gorgeous and the characters were well done and uh, everything was just so well thought out, it alternated between the present and the parents' past, and you knew where they were coming from. It was an interracial family, and everything going on for it, and I really loved it. This one tries to do too much, I think. Um, because the structure is not something that's easy to follow. So you'll have like the present structure. It's a frame tale, basically. So you start with the house, the Richardson's house on fire. Uh, <laughs> And then you go back in time to when uh, Mia and Pearl first arrived and rented the house from a different house from the, the Richardsons. So you have that contrast in class. In several interviews, Celeste Ng has talked about she wanted to tackle class in this one. Now, I was kind of concerned because Celeste Ng is from Shaker Heights. She's from this affluent community. And I wondered how she could represent the more working class community, which is more where I'm from. And sometimes when people try to portray that, you know, as you probably know, it doesn't always go well. Um, I thought she did fairly well. Um, I think she did great, but I think she did really well um, in some aspects. 
So at first we think Mia and Pearl are there because Mia is this avant-garde, like, artisty person and she wants to live on the road, she likes that kind of thing, um, but part of the book is learning why she lives that lifestyle. And she really does, uh, Ying does a good job of portraying Pearl's desire to, to set down roots as a teenager and to have friends and different things and that really this type of lifestyle is not a choice as much as we think it is. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed all the themes in this book. She has so many, everything she says is just wonderful and I love that about Celeste Ng. So I'm going to read everything that she writes and I loved her stripped down style but I think she kind of tried to do too much in this book. I still enjoyed this book. It was definitely a page turner for me and I still would recommend it and hope everyone loves it. Um, but yeah, and uh, but her characters are always great. So if you love character development um, and look at different things, then yeah. There's a lot of mystery in this book and I can't really talk about other things about it without giving spoilers, so I'm just gonna stop talking and say, if you have read this book and you have thoughts on it, please let me know. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Another book I read is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Um, this is the last one. I promise, guys, it is coming. Sam is coming back to the channel and we will finish our series. We just had to take a break. Weddings, family, etc. But he is finishing this last book in the series and then we are going to record them and they will come up eventually. Okay, so the last two books that I'm going to talk about are books that really go together, um, and that is The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish and A Book of Separation. The Book of Separation by Tova Morris. These are both by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Um, you can tell they kind of go together. Um, both of these books are about Jewish women um, dealing with their culture and religious norms and their times and different things. So um, let's start with Toa's book. Um, it comes out the 19th, I think. Um, this is uh, about her memoir about leaving uh, Orthodox Judaism. Uh, she was 40 when she decided to leave and she divorced her husband and um, it's just basically a year in her life of coming to terms with that. I really love Toa's emotional maturity and her look at religion in a person's life and I really love how unlike a lot of other losing your religion memoirs she has uh, so a lot of love for the people and the community that she's leaving. She just no longer can like essentially live a lie. She can no longer do these things that she doesn't believe in. And her um, son still wants to practice um, Orthodox Judaism, so she still helps him and does it for him. And um, you know, she's just not angry, and she, her life doesn't go into a tailspin. And yeah, so I, I just greatly appreciated this that you know you don't have to totally react against the thing that you've decided to leave. You can um, do it like an adult. So I really, really love this book. Um, she's just ugh, so many insights. Um, and I also really love The Weight of Ink. Now, I'm not really into hardcore historical fiction as much. It's not because I don't like it. It's just not something that I gravitate towards. Um, but this one has all of those little details that a lot of historical fiction lovers um, love. Uh, you have, uh, th there's two storylines. There's the modern contemporary storyline with Helen, who has discovered these documents about a female a Jewish scribe during like slightly post Shakespeare era. And then you have the actual scribe named Esther, um, and she has fled um, the Inquisition for being a, a Jew and is now in England with this really um, unknown rabbi dude. And, his, and is his scribe because her brother decides he doesn't want to do it anymore. Anyway, um, this book is really long. Um, and I will say that there are some stuff that probably could be cut out of this book. But the majority um, is just a lot of historical detail. There's documents because Helen is like a academic Indiana Jones in her 60s. So she's really cool. I, I love her to pieces. And at the end of this book, I just had to keep listening. There are a lot of twists and turns in this book that I didn't expect. Um, it is rich with historical detail and a lot of meaningful um, commentary on life. I will say that if you're not into those details and you don't really like slower books, then this probably isn't the book for you because it is chock full of details and it does slowly meander at large sections. So, but overall, I really love this book and it's just, it's beautiful. 
and I learned a lot as well. We also, on the Reading Woman, interviewed both of, you know, as I said, Tova and Rachel. Uh, so if you want to check out that interview, it comes out tomorrow, which is exciting. Um, they were both very gracious and agreed to join Autumn and me. And so they're two best friends talking to two best friends. And so I felt that it really worked well. Um, we're all, but all introverts, so that's always an adventure getting us to try to talk on a podcast, but I really enjoyed it. So you definitely want to go check that out when it goes up. Um, yeah, that is everything I have for this wrap up. If you have read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to chat with you in the comments. I guess that's it for me and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <music>